Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hull Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim speaks to Trimoran sailor Mark Johnson. Here, Mark shares his thoughts on how to economically use a water maker aboard a cruising vessel. You can find the complete audio, including all of the recorded conversations in this series, at www.outrigmedia.com. Another example is uh, we do have a water maker, and our water maker is the uh, the same one we had on Mauna Loa. It's 23 years old. It's a 12-volt power survivor. It's the smallest and the least expensive, and it was really inexpensive back then. It's, it's gone up. Uh, but I weigh the cost versus how much I would have had to pay uh, in reverse osmosis water from shore, and it doesn't take long for that to really add up. Um, you and John seem to have cruised in places where rain catchment was was uh, entirely feasible. And at, at times, yeah, during certain seasons, it is. Yes. Well, it, it is almost it, everywhere, but only at times. Right, at times, <laughs> and and I know you spent a lot of time in the San Blas, and you know it rains like crazy down there. Um, but we spent. Um, we spent months in Belize, and I don't remember it raining a, a single time. And uh, we would spend weeks out on the reef where other people couldn't, and it was because of the water maker. But just like in every single technologically complex device on the boat, we don't rely on it. So, so the way we've uh, plumbed our boat and, and the way we have the water maker work for us is we have uh, 30 gallons of tankage divided up over three tanks. And uh, so if the pressure system was to, say, due to a burst hose, the most you could lose is one-third of your water supply. Ah, yeah. Uh, and, and the reason I wanted a pressure system is, I, for one thing, I couldn't find a convenient place for a foot pump. Um, and the other thing is we wanted a seagull filter, which allows you to chlorinate the water that's in your tanks. And in really warm tropical water, especially if you're getting water from shore that has no chlorine in it, uh, if you don't chlorinate the water, it's going to get algae in the tanks, and then you've got this leafy stuff in the lines. So we wanted to chlorinate the water, but we didn't want to drink the chlorine. And, and the seagull does double duty of removing chlorine and uh, 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 cutting down on the bacteria count. Uh, you can't use a foot pump with a, a seagull filter very effectively because there's so much resistance. Ah. What we what we do instead is we wash water with seawater with a you know a seawater through hull, and we use a foot pump which is the tow type, but it's in the it's in the counterface, and we oh. use our hip, and we just sort ah. of we we call it the humpy pumpy, and you, if you visualize the motion, it's you'll understand. Yeah. Uh, but we use our our hip to wash the dishes and then just the slightest little trickle of fresh water to wash the salt off. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's worked really well for us. Um, the, uh, getting back to the, to the water maker, uh, what so many people do, and you know, I've tried to explain the fallacy of this and I've gotten nowhere, everybody wants the biggest, most powerful uh, water maker they can so that they can completely empty their 150-gallon tanks and then fill them back in a hurry. Well, water makers don't take to being used occasionally. They like to be used every day. So what we do is when we're in an area which we can use the water maker, like the Bahamas where the, the harbors are mostly open and the water is mostly clear, uh, we keep our tanks full. We only use three gallons a day, uh, about two of that, is um, is for bathing, and the other is for drinking and for cooking. Uh, so we'll use three gallons, and we'll replace it each morning. Uh, early in the morning, 
uh, because the, you, you want your low voltage on the, the batteries to be early in the morning so that uh, the solar panels can do their job by noon. Uh, so, yeah. the, so the solar panels are running the water maker. Uh, after maybe two hours in the morning, uh, we've got our water made and our tanks are full and we go about our day and we go plan our dive trip or our foray ashore, or go into the grocery store or whatever. And uh, the way we figure it is if it goes out on us, which it never has, uh, we're right back to where we would have been if we didn't have it, which is full tankage. And uh, you could easily go a month if you were at sea on 30 gallons of water. You just you quit bathing with it. And uh, a gallon a day is plenty for two people for a month. So Yeah, that's also, the usual ration is a half a gallon a day per person uh, under, you know, the stressful, if not emergency, conditions. Well, if that's the way we looked at it. And, and the thing is, when I try to explain to people, just like with the refrigerator, go very small, uh, just use it to top your tanks off. Don't drain your tanks down. Don't be reliant on it. Uh, bathe with a garden sprayer, because as, as much as I have used technology in some areas, I never found an improvement for a black plastic garden sprayer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, our garden sprayer is the one off of Mount Aloha from 22 years ago. 23 years ago, and uh, it's the only maintenance is you put a little grease on the flapper valve, and uh, it's you know it's got the little handheld nozzle, and it's solar heated when you put it in the sun. And if it's uh, not enough sun, or if it's the winter time, we put in one kettle full of uh, of hot water with two kettles fulls of cold water, and it makes it a perfect lukewarm shower. And we prefer since we've got a hard dodger and a and a little connecting piece between the Dodger and the, the Bimini. We have a full enclosure, which we occasionally use. But uh, anchored out normally, we just put in this little connecting piece. So we're out of the wind in the cockpit. And we just hunker down in the footwell and, and take a quick shower. And uh, so we've never been able to improve on that. And it really cuts down on, on water usage. But when I try to, to explain that of uh, using a garden sprayer and a two cubic foot refrigeration and uh, the smallest water maker and don't rely on it, uh, have a backup system. I know people who wouldn't install the systems, and I know people who are installing huge complex systems, but I'm not finding many people that are willing to install them but not do it this way. But this way is the way that it is incredibly reliable, not that expensive, and a real accoutrement to the lifestyle without really insulating you from the experience on shore because we're still going ashore every day. Uh, we're, we're going to the fresh market. Um, we're, we're keeping all of our condiments without refrigeration. We're doing all of the things that you and John mentioned. Uh, turning eggs, don't refrigerate the eggs. Don't put a dirty knife in your mayonnaise jar. You know, all of that uh, uh, so that you're not having to use the refrigerator. It's just nice to have some fresh veggies, and uh, I have had hot beer on my previous two boats. I never had refrigeration. And uh, I, I like it cold, though. It's just a nice thing to have. Thanks for listening. To find out how to obtain this complete audio conversation, as well as all of the audios in this historic multi-hull series, please visit us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com.